Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News webinar. It's entitled, Smart End Glycan Analysis with a Fast and Simple Workflow and Exquisite Sensitivity. Unlike proteins and other biomolecules, researchers have found glycan sometimes very tough to study. Technological advances in tools and techniques for improved glycan analysis have been few and far in between. And that's the issue we're going to address during today's webinar. Our presenter is Dr. Matthew Lauber. He's a senior applications specialist at Waters Corporation. Matt's going to describe and discuss a novel streamlined glycan sample prep workflow methodology. I'm John Sterling, Editor-in-Chief of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News, and I'm going to serve as the moderator. At any time during the webinar, you can send a question for our panelist. Type it into the Ask a Question box on the left-hand side of your computer, and then hit Submit. Dr. Lauber will try to answer as many as possible during the question and answer segment that takes place after the presentation has been made. Uh, before we begin, I'd also like to ask everybody to disable your pop-up blockers. Two polls are going to appear during the webinar related to the webinar topic, and I will give you a heads up before they do appear. So if everyone's ready, let's get going. Matt, the floor is all yours. Thank you, John, and thank you all of you for choosing to listen in today. In this presentation, we will discuss several developments that Waters has made toward establishing a streamlined workflow to rapidly prepare release end glycans for profiling by hydrophilic interaction chromatography. One very significant development that we have made is the creation of a novel fluorescence and MS active labeling reagent that near instantaneously modifies glycans following their release from glycoproteins. Glycosylation is a profoundly important post-translational modification of proteins involving the attachment of saccharide moieties. The so-called glycans that are introduced by this process are linked to the protein through asparagine residues and called N-linked glycans are sometimes through serine or threonine residues and referred to as O-linked glycans. N-glycosylation of proteins in particular is routinely characterized and monitored because of its significance to the detection of disease states and the manufacturing of biopharmaceuticals. Not surprisingly, then, the glycan profile of a biopharmaceutical is frequently defined as a quality attribute. This is because it can be a measure of efficacy, immunogenicity, as well as manufacturing conditions. Take, for instance, the IgG shown on this figure. In the circled region, a typical IgG will contain two N-glycan sites. On one IgG molecule, each site might contain a unique N-glycan, possibly one from the selection of N-glycan shown on the right. Where the glycan composition is shown to vary by structure and composition of monosaccharides. Interestingly, glycans can uniquely affect the attributes of therapeutic proteins. For instance, fucosylation and galactosylation have been shown to be linked to effector function, high mannostructures to increase clearance rates, silylation to anti-inflammatory effects, and non-human monosaccharides as stimulators of immunogenic response. Needless to say, there are many reasons for there being interest in analytical approaches for characterization and monitoring of protein glycosylation. And there are many strategies used in glycoprotein characterization, each involving methods of varying complexity and each providing complementary, albeit varying levels of information. Intact protein analysis is often employed to obtain a global view of glycan content, middle up or middle down LCMS strategies to obtain high resolution data and domain specific information, glycopeptide mapping to elucidate linkage sites, and lastly, monosaccharide analysis where compositional information about glycan modifications is obtained. But with little dispute, it could be said that the most important tool for obtaining glycan information is release glycan analysis. Most analytical strategies for evaluating N glycans from glycoproteins involve deglycosylation with PNGASF and the labeling of the resulting N-linked glycans with a chemical moiety that imparts a detectable attribute. In one highly effective approach, labeled glycans are separated by hydrophilic interaction chromatography, which we call HILIC, and detected by fluorescence and potentially even mass spectrometry. Unfortunately, conventional approaches to the preparation of N glycans for HILIC fluorescence and mass analyses are either laborious and time consuming or have required compromises in sensitivity. For instance, 
Beagle-like oscillation is very often employed as an overnight incubation and then combined with a lengthy two to four hour labeling step based on reductive amination. And in the case of one of the most frequently employed labeling compounds, 2-aminobenzamide, the resulting glycans can be readily detected by fluorescence, but be rather challenging to detect by electrospray ionization mass spectrometry. And this is because of their poor ionization efficiency. Variations to conventional approaches for end glycan sample preparation have been explored, but have not as of yet presented a practical solution that combines the desired attributes of simplicity, high sensitivity, and high throughput. Alternative labeling reagents, for example, procanamide, that have functional groups to enhance electrospray ionization efficiency have been used, but this does not address the cumbersome, time-consuming nature of reductive amination reactions. Rapid tagging procedures that yield labeled glycans in a matter of minutes have consequently been investigated. In this approach, glycosylamines are modified with electrophilic reactive groups before they hydrolyze to reducing aldehyde-terminated glycans. Gong and researchers have demonstrated the use of a rapid tagging labeling reagent constructed with a basic tertiary mean for rapid labeling that is amenable to MS analysis. However, the proposed labeling reagent does not impart a chromophore onto the glycan, which limits its utility for many analyses, wherein fluorescence-based profiling is desirable. Cook and coworkers have, in addition, presented the use of a rapid tagging analog of aminobenzamide. Although this rapid tagging reagent accelerates the labeling procedure, it does not provide the ionization efficiency needed to simplify glycan characterization and peak identification. To address the previously mentioned shortcomings, we have developed an approach that enables superior sensitivity for glycan detection while also improving the throughput of N-glycan sample prep as a whole. Conventional N-glycan sample preparation is dependent on reductive amination of aldehyde-terminated saccharides. This is a process that requires glycans to undergo multiple chemical conversions, as shown on this slide, and for them to undergo a lengthy high-temperature incubation step. Moreover, glycans must be reductively aminated in water-free conditions in order to minimize desilylation. Sample preparations are therefore burdened with transitioning a sample from aqueous to anhydrous conditions. For these reasons, we developed a new labeling reagent that foregoes reductive amination and instead takes advantage of an aqueous rapid tagging reaction. To this end, we revisited Waters' expertise in rapid fluorescence labeling of amino acid. For over 20 years, Waters has provided a solution for amino acid labeling wherein the novel reagent Acuflor is used. This molecule shown on the top right has two very important chemical characteristics. That it has a rapid tagging reactive group and that it has a high efficiency fluorophore. To facilitate modern glycan analyses, Acuflor was functionalized so as to have a third chemical property, a tertiary amine charge tag for enhancing positive ion mode electrospray ionization. The resulting novel labeling reagent is rapifluor-MS. For rapifluor-MS, an NHS carbamate reactive group was chosen for its rapid reaction kinetics. Electrophilic reactive groups activated with NHS and hydroxysuccinimide leaving groups have long been used to modify protonaceous amine residues. The NHS carbamate reactive group of rapifluor-MS near instantaneously modifies the amine that forms on N-glycans upon their enzymatic release from glycoproteins. In a five-minute procedural step, glycosylamines are labeled under ambient aqueous conditions to yield highly stable urea-linked derivatives. Glycans labeled in this way have been exhaustively studied. In particular, the response factors of rapifluor-MS labeled glycans have been benchmarked against those observed for glycans labeled with alternative labeling reagents. The most closely related commercially available alternative, alternative to rapifluor-MS is an NHS carbamate analog of aminobenzamide known as instant AB. The figures on the left present hillock fluorescence and base peak intensity MS chromatograms for equivalent quantities of N-glycans released from a murine monoclonal IgG1 antibody and labeled with rapifluor-MS and instant AB respectively. Based on the observed chromatographic peak areas, response factors for fluorescence and MS detection were determined for the most abundant glycan in the IgG profile, the fucosylated biantenary FA2 glycan. These results shown on the right indicate that rapifluor-MS labeled glycans produce two times higher fluorescence signals, but more astoundingly, 
nearly 800 times greater MS signal than N glycans labeled with instant AB. In a similar fashion, rapifloramess labeling has been compared to conventional 2AB labeling. Given that rapid tagging and reductive amination are performed by significantly different procedures, external calibrations were established using quantitative standards in order to determine the exact amounts of FA2 glycan loaded onto and eluded from the hillock column that is being employed in these separations. Using a standard containing rapifloramess labeled in glycans from pooled human IgG, the shown chromatograms were obtained, and it was confirmed that the FA2 glycan was analyzed at a load of approximately 2.2 picomoles. Response factors could thereby be very accurately determined in units of signal per picomole of glycan. Using a standard containing instead 2AB labeled in glycans from pooled human IgG, the following chromatograms were obtained. Quantitative analysis of the sample confirmed that the FA2 glycan was analyzed at a similar load between 2 and 3 picomoles. Again, response factors could there be accurately determined. The comparative analysis of rapifloramess versus 2AB is outlined here. As before, the figures on the left present hillock fluorescence and base peak intensity MS chromatograms, now with species labeled with rapifloramess and 2AB. Response factors are provided on the right. It was determined that the rapifloramess labeled glycans were detected with significantly superior sensitivity, specifically with 14 times higher fluorescence and about 160 times higher MS signal. To summarize these benchmarking experiments, the response factors from alternative labeling reagents have been plotted as percentages against the response factors of rapifloramess. Gains in sensitivity are apparent in this plot since it portrays response factors for instant AB and 2AB normalized to those of the new label. In this figure, the performance of reductive amination with another alternative labeling reagent, percanamide, is also provided. Percanamide is a chemical analog to aminobenzamide that has recently been shown to enhance the ionization of reductively aminated glycans by up to 50-fold when they are analyzed by positive ion mode ESIMS. But this means that even when compared to percanamide, rapifloramess is still likely to provide sizable gains in sensitivity. And keep in mind that percanamide is specifically chosen for MS work and requires the use of a two to three hour labeling step. Since both percanamide and rapifloramess contain similar tertiary amine moieties, it is reasonable to suggest that the heightened ionization with rapifloramess results from its additional hydrophobicity. Indeed, previous studies have shown that the addition of hydrophobic surface area to a glycan label leads to an increased electrospray ionization. That the rapifloramess label has a strongly basic side chain in addition to a relatively hydrophobic core structure is therefore noteworthy. More notably, the collected response factor data suggests that rapifloramess labeling provides unprecedented fluorescence and MS sensitivity for hillock profiling of N glycans. Here then, I'll invite John to ask about your preferred detection mechanisms. Thank you, Matt. And as I said at the beginning of the webinar, we're going to have two polls. The first is, what is your primary mode of detection in your laboratories today? And let's take about 20 seconds to, to answer that. Okay, great. We will proceed. Matt, why don't you pick up? So, in many ways, rapifloramess was proving to be a revolutionary labeling reagent. So, it was important to ensure that the sample prep workflow in which to wield it was made equally so. As mentioned earlier, conventional approaches to N-glycan sample prep often consume an entire workday. It was critical that rapifloramess labeling not be encumbered with such an approach. Therefore, we collaborated with a well-known enzyme company, New England Biolabs, to create a customized rapid deglycosylation protocol for our N-glycan platform. Glycoproteins can now be deglycosylated in a 10-minute procedure enabled by a surfactant from waters known as RapiGSSF. Directly integrated with this deglycosylation procedure is a rapid tagging of the release glycans with RapiFluorMS, a step that takes no more than five minutes. The final step in our prep for rapifloramess 
glycans is a quick cleanup of labeled glycans using microelution helix solid phase extraction. Compared to a conventional one-day protocol, the collection of our new developments in N-glycan sample prep is remarkable. The total time to complete the newly developed protocol is just 30 minutes. And these developments have been commercialized in the form of a new kit from Waters, the Glycoworks Rapiflorimas and Glycan kit. Contributing in large part to the quick sample prep time is rapid deglycosylation. Incubation under elevated temperatures has been explored as a means to accelerate PNGASF deglycosylation kinetics. Similarly, enzyme-friendly surfactants have been employed to enhance deglycosylation. Looking to compound their effects, we developed something involving the combination of these approaches. For deglycosylation, the Glycoworks Rapiflorimas and Glycan kit provides a novel formulation of rapid PNGSF and Rapigest SF surfactant. Rapigest, an anionic surfactant, is used to ensure that N glycans are accessible for deglycosylation and that glycoproteins remain soluble upon heat denaturation. Most importantly, Rapigest is an enzyme friendly reagent and can therefore be used at high concentrations without significantly hindering the activity of the rapid PNGSF. So now, in a single reaction file workflow, a glycoprotein is subjected to a high concentration of Rapigest and heat denatured for two minutes. Subsequently, and without any additional sample handling, rapid PNGSF is added to the solution and the mixture is incubated at 50 degrees for an additional five minutes. And this achieves complete de deglycosylation of most glycoproteins. The effectiveness of this fast deglycosylation process has been evaluated using the SDS page. This is a useful technique for separating proteins, familiar to many, because it separates proteins based on their size and solution. SDS page is employed here to separate the glycosylated and deglycosylated forms of proteins. A diverse set of glycoproteins were deglycosylated according to the fast deglycosylation procedure and then analyzed by the SDS page along with negative controls containing no PNGASF and positive controls in which the glycoproteins were subjected to conventional multi-step deglycosylation where we were using SDS-based denaturation combined with DTT reduction and a PNGASF incubation at a more conventional 37 degrees. This gel image provides the results of this study where it can be seen that for each of the tested proteins, there's a significant decrease in protein apparent molecular weight after they have been subjected to rapid deglycosylation. Moreover, the apparent molecular weight decreases are visually comparable to those observed for proteins deglycosylated by the control method. For example, the protein band seen for RNase B in the negative control shows a slowly migrating band corresponding to the fully glycosylated native RNase B. Meanwhile, the rapid deglycosylation and positive control samples display equivalent band profiles and more quickly migrating bands corresponding to the deglycosylated RNase-B. So the rapid deglycosylation approach, as you can see here, produces deglycosylation of most glycoproteins in a way that is comparable to conventional approaches, but it requires only a fraction of the time. It is worth noting that some glycoproteins must be subjected to reducing conditions in order to achieve complete deglycosylation. For instance, samples of transferrin and gonadotropin were found to present bands indicative of incomplete deglycosylation upon initial attempts to apply rapid deglycosylation. Accordingly, rapid deglycosylation was also performed in the presence of 4 millimolar TSEP reducing agent. TSEP being non-nucleophilic was chosen over thiol reducing agents to ensure compatibility with rapid tagging labeling reactions. With the TSEP reducing condition, rapid deglycosylation yielded band profiles comparable to the conventional SDS and DTT approach. These results demonstrate the utility of rapid deglycosylation for a very diverse set of glycoproteins. For most glycoproteins, including IgGs and IgG-like molecules, non-reducing conditions for rapid deglycosylation are sufficient. In cases of recalcitrant proteins extensively stabilized by disulfide bonds, reducing conditions with TSEP can also be employed along with rapid deglycosylation to achieve complete release. To more quantitatively assay the completeness of the rapid deglycosylation approach, we have additionally analyzed deglycosylation products by intact mass analysis. 
In this slide, deconvoluted ESI mass spectra are presented for a murine monoclonal IgG1 subjected to various conditions. The top spectrum shows the MAB before it had been subjected to rapid deglycosylation. The middle spectrum, meanwhile, shows the MAB after it had been incubated for just deglycosylation. Lastly, the bottom spectrum presents the MAB after it had been subjected to our proposed approach of combining surfactant-assisted heat denaturation with a five-minute incubation for deglycosylation at 50 degrees. Mass spectrometric detection confirms that these samples present different states of glycan occupancy. The control sample contains the MAB in its doubly glycosylated native form. Once incubated for deglycosylation, this MAB predominantly presented molecular weights indicative of loss of one glycan. In contrast, however, the sample subjected to our proposed rapid deglycosylation protocol is represented by a single mass that is in agreement with the molecular weight predicted for the MAB after a complete loss of both end glycans. In addition to releasing FC domain glycans as shown in this example, it has been confirmed that the rapid deglycosylation approach produces complete release of FAB domain glycans as has been evidenced by a comparison of cetuximab subunit glycan information versus a rapifluoromess-derived N-glycan profile. The final step in our N-glycan sample preparation aims to extract the labeled glycans in preparation for their analysis. An approach for this has been achieved with solid phase extraction that has been designed to enrich rapifluoromess-labeled N-glycans from labeling reaction byproducts. And these are byproducts that can otherwise interfere with the analysis of labeled glycans by halic column chromatography. A highly polar aminopropyl bonded silica-based sorbent was selected for this application since it possesses useful retentivity for glycans, as well as a weakly basic surface that can be exploited for ion exchange, as well as electrostatic repulsion chromatography. In the employed SBE process, the glycans are absorbed to the sorbent via a halic mechanism, then the sample is washed to remove the sample matrix. Upon their elution, the rapifluoromethyl labeled glycans are diluted with a mixture of organic solvents, specifically acetonitrile and dimethylformamid, and then directly analyzed by halic column chromatography. Chromatographic examples of a crude rapifluoromethyl reaction mixture and an SBE processed rapifluoromethyl labeled glycan sample are shown here. Absolute and relative recoveries for this novel halic SBE process have been studied. Rapifluoromethyl labeled glycans prepared from a mixture of pooled human IgG and bovine fetuin were processed by multiple SBE passes and recoveries across the serial processing were measured. Specifically, recoveries were measured for the species representing extremes in glycan properties, including a small neutral FA2 glycan and a glycan with a tetrasilated triantinerary structure. Absolute recovery through the SBE process has been found to be approximately 74%, which is a common yield for microscale SPE. The majority of the observed sample losses can be viewed as a consequence of elution volume. The small plot on the right shows fluorescence peak areas for samples wherein the final SPE elution volume was either 30, 90, or 180 microliters. This plot shows that SPE recovery is indeed a function of elution volume and that highest recoveries are achieved when employing large elution volumes. But to facilitate direct analyses, a compromise is made such that a 90 microliter elution volume is used in order to obtain a relatively concentrated glycan eluate. But regardless of the elution volume and absolute yield of glycans from the SPE sorbent, the most important characteristic of any cleanup is that the observed sample losses be nonspecific. Most importantly, then, is the fact that this SP has been found to exhibit highly accurate relative yields. The chromatograms on the left show the mentioned test mixture after one pass of SP versus two passes of SP. The figure on the right plots the relative abundances for four glycans in these samples. The largest deviation in relative abundances was observed for the mentioned tetrasilated glycan, but this was actually only a minor change of going from 5.7% with one pass of SP versus 6.1% after two passes of SBE. With these results, then, it is demonstrated that this SBE technique provides a robust mechanism to immediately analyze a sample of extracted rapifluoromethyl labeled glycans, and that it does so without compromising the accuracy of relative abundances for a wide range of N-glycan structures. Equally robust 
is RAPI4MS labeling itself. Significant time was spent investigating parameters of rapid labeling reactions with NHS carbamate reagents. In this example, optimized conditions were employed along with a titration of RAPI4MS to define an optimal reagent concentration. Fluorescence chromatograms for labeled, released, and glycans from a MAB are stacked on the left, each obtained from labeling with a fixed glycoprotein concentration and a varying concentration of RAPI4MS. As shown on the figure on the right, plotting of the fluorescence peak areas for the resulting in glycan profiles indicates that labeling is maximized near RAPI4MS reagent concentration of about 36 millimolar, the exact condition which has been designed into the N-glycan kit. Moreover, molar excess conditions both higher and lower than this condition produce essentially comparable fluorescence profiles, underscoring the robustness of the RAPI4MS labeling. Nevertheless, rapid tagging reactions must be optimized for not only yield, but also minimization of artifacts. Some have reported issues in applying rapid tagging reactions to N-glycan sample preparation because of the formation of artifacts resulting from glycans being modified by more than one label. Glycosylamines will be preferentially modified at their primary amine site. However, hydroxyl groups, for which there are many N-glycans, can in fact be modified too, albeit with a significantly slower reaction rate. For this reason, poorly optimized labeling conditions can lead to noisy baselines where there are so-called over-labeled glycan species containing two labels. The chromatogram on the top left shows an example of finding such confounding species when poorly optimized conditions were employed for labeling. The parameters for RAPI4MS labeling have been tuned by optimizing pH, ionic strength, buffer composition, and most importantly, molar excess of reagent. The outcome of this work are optimal conditions that minimize the formation of these so-called overlabeled species. As shown on the bottom chromatogram, obtained for a sample labeled with the optimized conditions in the plot on the right, relative percentages of the overlabeled artifacts versus the desired singly modified glycans are less than or equal to 0.1%. This means that artifacts of rapid, ta rapid tagging are kept from populating the RAPI4MS glycan profiles at any significant level above the lower dynamic range limits of most mass spectrometers. Finally, in a different view of robustness, it is worth looking at the yield of N-glycan through the entire workflow. This was evaluated in order to measure the collective efficiency of combining rapid deglycosylation, rapid labeling, and microelution halic SP extraction of the RAPI4MS labeled glycans. RAPI4MS labeled in glycans from a MAB were therefore prepared, analyzed by halic fluorescence, and quantified by means of an external calibration. Using a theoretical yield and duplicate analysis, it was determined that the percent yield through the entire sample prep is an approximate yield of 73%. As summarized in this table, deglycosylation has been shown to be complete as evidenced by intact mass analysis, gel shift assays, and subunit LCMS. Labeling, in turn, has been optimized to provide greater than 95% yield and seen to not introduce bias to a glycan profile, given our observations that RAPI4MS labeled glycan profiles match subunit-derived glycan information. Finally, the HILIC SP cleanup exhibits a recovery of approximately 74%, but most importantly, ex this exhibits minimal bias as supported by our assessments of complex glycan profiles before and after SP processing. This all amounts to a relatively high yield through the entire workflow. To provide perspective, we have evaluated the yield of 2AB labeled in glycans from an alternative sample preparation workflow involving the use of a glycoprep rapid in glycan preparation with 2AB kit. Quantitative analyses have shown that the 2AB labeled in glycans prepared using this kit are yielded at approximately only 35%. Thus, not only does the RAPI4MS approach quicken a historically time consuming sample preparation, it also exhibits minimal sample loss and comparatively high yields. In one last demonstration of the robustness of RAPI4MS-based N-glycan sample preparation, we provide information on the stability of the RAPI4MS glycan derivatives. Knowing that some glycan samples may need to be stored prior to be an being analyzed, RAPI4MS labeled glycans prepared from a MAB as 
acetonitrile and dimethylformamide diluted SPE eluate were analyzed before and after a 72-hour period at 10 degrees. Chromatograms for this sample are shown on the left. To make comparison informative, the chromatograms are shown with a 2x zoom to make even small changes in the profile apparent if changes had in fact occurred. They did not. As seen in the plot on the right, no significant change was observed for the glycans present in the sample. Currently, we have also seen no significant change in the derivatized glycans even after two weeks in an aqueous solution. This is not surprising to us as the urea linkage attaching the rapisfluoromethyl label to the glycans is highly stabilized by resonance. So in summary, it could be said that past approaches to N-glycan sample prep have been laborious and time-consuming or have required compromises in sensitivity. But with the development of the Glycoworks Rapifluoromethane Glycan Kit, we address these shortcomings and enable unprecedented sensitivity for glycan detection while also improving the throughput of the N-glycan sample prep workflow as a whole. With this approach, glycoproteins are deglycosylated in approximately 10 minutes to produce N-glycosylamines. These glycans are then rapidly reacted with a novel rapifluoromethyl reagent in a five-minute procedural step and are thereby labeled with a tag comprised of an efficient fluorophore as well as a highly basic tertiary amine charge tag so that sensitivity is enhanced for both fluorescence and MS detection. In a final step requiring no more than 15 minutes, the resulting rapifluoromethyl labeled glycans are extracted from reaction byproducts. This is done by microelution SPE that has been rigorously developed to provide quantitative recovery of glycans and to facilitate immediate analysis of samples. Accordingly, an analyst can now complete an N-glycan sample preparation from glycoprotein to ready-to-analyze sample in just 30 minutes while also using the sensitivity-enhancing rapifluoromethyl labeling reagent. Having shown you our recent developments, I would now invite John to pose another question about your current or past sample preparation workflows. Thank you, Matt. So our second poll question is, what feature of your existing sample preparation workflow would be most desirable to improve? As in the first one, if you could pick one of the five answers there, uh, then hit submit, and we'll, give, we'll take about 20, 25 seconds. Okay, Matt, you're up again. Just as exciting as our developments in glycan sample prep are some examples that showcase how the Glycoworks rapifluoromethane glycan kit is facilitating glycan analyses. The first example that I'd like to share is that of glycan characterization. It should be pointed out that in these studies we are using a new Zevo G2XS QTOF. This mass spectrometer is ideally suited for glycan characterization because it is constructed with a unique segmented high transmission efficiency collision cell that produces very high sensitivity MS and MS-MS analyses. Nevertheless, even with such an MS instrument, there is and will remain an issue with MS analysis of glycans prepared by conventional approaches. Specifically, there is a challenge to obtain sufficient MS information for all peaks observed in a high-sensitivity fluorescence profile. This is highlighted in this example. On the top chromatogram, the MS signal observed for glycans from a conventional 2AB approach is represented. The analysis was on glycans from 10 micrograms of glycoprotein in a sample prep approach that took a day and a half to complete. In contrast, the bottom chromatogram highlights results from rapifluoromethyl labeled glycans. Here, glycans from 100 times less glycoprotein in a 30-minute sample prep were analyzed. It is clear that when compared to 2AB, rapifluoromethyl provides huge gains in MS sensitivity. This means that for even low-abundance glycan species, glycans can be detected with clean, interpretable mass spectra so that thorough characterization of glycan profiles is made significantly easier. As is the case in this example, when an alpha-gal containing immunogenic and glycan was, was reported to be present in a MAB sample at a relative abundance of about 0.2%. Because the rapifluoromethyl label has high proton affinity, 
derivatized glycans preferentially adopt uniquely high charge states. This is during positive ion mode electrospray ionization. As shown with the mass spectra on the left, the predominant charge state for a small neutral glycan, such as an FA2 glycan, is doubly protonated, or 2 plus. But this increases to 3 plus and 4 plus charge states for increasing larger molecular weight glycans. Notice that these species, when labeled with 2AB, adopt only 1 plus or 2 plus charge states. Interestingly, collision induced dissociation, CID, of the doubly and triply protonated rapifluoromethyl label glycans shows similar fragmentation pathways as those previously reported for 2AB label glycans. For instance, high intensity B and Y ions from glycosidic bond cle cleavages have been predominantly observed along with low intensity cross ring fragments. However, unlike 2AB label glycans, rapifluoromethyl label glycans readily produce high signal to noise MSMS -MS spectra from relatively low analyte quantities. An MSMS spectrum for an FA2 glycan derivatized with rapi MS is provided to illustrate the quality of information afforded by the new labeling technology. The annotations in this spectrum inform on compositional and structural aspects of the precursor glycan. There is a contiguous series of glycosidic bond fragments, which near exclusively contain the labeled end of the glycan. In addition, Lower intensity cross ring fragments can be observed, such as the highlighted A15 fragment. Clearly, the enhanced ionization efficiency provided by RAPI FluorMS, combined with the newest developments in QTOF mass spectrometry, make for a powerful tool set for glycan characterization. To this end, these new technologies have been applied to characterize the in glycan profile of another monoclonal antibody, in addition to the one shown just before. This is an anti-citrin in murin IgG1, which is available from Waters as the intact MAB mass check standard. Rapifluoromethyl label glycans were prepared using the new N-glycan kit, then analyzed by high-resolution UPLC helix separation, fluorescence detection, and MS as well as MSMS. The displayed chromatograms show the fluorescence and base peak intensity MS chromatograms attained obtained in this study for rapifluoromethyl labeled inline glycans resulting from only 0.9 micrograms of the MAB. Due to the poor ionization efficiency of glycans labeled with conventional labels, it is often difficult to detect, let alone characterize, low abundance glycan species during HILIC ESIMS analyses. But note here that the base peak intensity MS chromatogram in this analysis presented signal to noise comparable, actually slightly higher, to that of the fluorescence chromatogram, making assignment of the glycan species by an accurate mass measurement straightforward. In this seemingly simple in glycan profile, many glycan identifications can actually be made. With rapi fluoromass, accurate mass measurements, and MSMS fragmentation, this glycan profile could in fact be readily characterized down to relative abundances as low as 0.04%. 18 identifications could be confirmed in a sample that upon first approximation appears to contain only five glycan species. One particularly interesting observation in this glycan profile is shown in the magnified view of the Hillett chromatogram, where two partially resolved chromatographic peaks can be observed. Accurate mass measurements show that these species are actually isobaric. From historical data and abundances of glycans in typical MAB samples, the first peak could be assigned to a common FA2G2, also known as a G2F glycan. The identity of the later eluding species, exhibiting the exact same MRZ value as the FA2G2 peak, could only be supported by additional data. MSMS spectra of the rapifluoromethyl labeled isobaric glycans were thus contrasted to elucidate their structural differences. With the enhanced MS signal afforded by the rapi fluoromethyl label, structurally diagnostic fragmentation data were obtained for the FA2G2 glycan as well as its isobaric analog. This figure shows a side-by-side -side comparison of the fragment ions generated from the high abundance glycan versus its isobaric low abundance counterpart. Note that a 528 mOZ ion was found to um, be very prominent in the spectrum for the low abundance isobaric species. High yields of such an ion have previously been reported as being diagnostic of an alpha-gal configuration in glycans, where two galactose residues are linked through an alpha-1,3 bond. Also observed in the spectrum for the low-abundance species was a very prominent loss of glycnac, 
which is observed when an in, in glycan branch terminates with a glycnac residue. Collectively, these high sensitivity, information rich fragmentation data support the identification of the isobaric low abundance species as an alpha gal containing FA2 G1 GA1 glycan, with a structure shown on the bottom right. By showing that low abundance glycans can be readily detected and characterized with minimal ambiguity, this case study demonstrates the new capabilities afforded by RapiFormS labeling for in glycan profiling and glycan structural elucidation. The unique chemical attributes of RapiFluorMS likewise lend themselves to facilitating glycan monitoring experiments. In glycan monitoring, samples are submitted for analysis that have already been thoroughly characterized. A key attribute that facilitates these experiments is the fact that RapiFluorMS labeling produces high sensitivity fluorescence profiles for released glycans and that these can be readily obtained whether an analyst is using UPLC or using HPLC. The, the top chromatogram here shows a UPLC-based method with a runtime of about 55 minutes and a correspondingly high resolution profile. Often there is a need to transfer between UPLC and HPLC instrumentation when glycan monitoring is carried out for a drug substance. Fortunately, the glycan BH amide stationary phase that is employed for these helix separations is available in both UPLC and HPLC particle sizes. In this case, the 55-minute UPLC method has been geometrically scaled to an HPLC method from a 1.7 micron to a 2.5 micron particle size stationary phase. Incredibly, essentially mirror image profiles are obtained upon the scaling between instrumentation platforms. An HPLC profile matching that from the UPLC separation can be achieved with the only changes being using three times as much sample and waiting two times longer for the run to complete. These results show the ease with which glycan monitoring can be transferred within and between laboratories and organizations using RapiFluorMS labeling and the BHM and HELIX separation. The MS capabilities afforded by RapiFluorMS labeling can likewise facilitate glycan monitoring. It is important in these types of experiments to be able to confidently track species in the HILIC profile. In addition, it would be extremely valuable to have analytical capabilities to propose identifications on spurious peaks that might be encountered. Because rapid 4 ms label glycans exhibit exemplary response factors, glycan monitoring can be performed in previously unimagined ways. For instance, the high charge states and enhanced detectability of rapid 4 ms glycans means that routine analyses can potentially be including mass detection with a low price point mass detector such as the Waters Acuity QDA. The QDA instrument is a remarkably enabling tool in its own right. It is a miniaturized quadrupole mass filter instrument with sensitivity enhancing step wave front end ion optics. Most importantly, it is built to be robust and designed to be extremely user friendly. Here, Rabi Floramass labeled glycans have been prepared for a broad range of glycan species, simple biantenary structures from an IgG, high mantle structures from RNA-B, and large thiolated structures from fetuin. The top chromatogram presents their helix fluorescence profiles, while the bottom chromatogram presents the mass spectral data generated for these particular samples with the QDA detector. You will note that the QDA-generated chromatograms exhibit noteworthy levels of signal for nearly all species observed in the high-sensitivity fluorescence profile. In an example of these potentially paradigm-shifting capabilities, Consider the situation of monitoring a fairly complicated fluorescence profile such as that encountered in the top fluorescence chromatogram. QDA detection paired with this high sensitivity fluorescence profile allows mass confirmation to be gained for each chromatographic peak. With simple data processing, each peak in the fluorescence profile can then be labeled with observed average masses that can be used to confirm glycan assignment. To help establish these new analytical workflows, such as routine monitoring with the QDA, we have pre prepared a new glycan performance test standard based on rapid fluorescence labeling. Each of these QC tested standards con contains rapid fluorescence labeled glycans derived from 30 micrograms of pooled human IgG. This standard is comprised of reasonable complexity with approximately 20 abundant species differing in molecular weight and thiolation. It is intended for this standard to be used for system suitability, method familiarization, benchmarking, and troubleshooting. 
Another standard that has been created to support these workflows is the Dexran ladder. This is specifically created for use in calibration of HILIC liquid chromatography. HILIC separations with glycan BDH amide columns can be used in conjunction with glucose units, GU values. The concept of GU values was developed as a means to calibrate HILIC-based glycan separations. In essence, it minimizes subtle retention time variations of separated glycans by uh, expressing the results in terms of a standardized GU value. To assign GU values, a dextran ladder comprised of glucose multimers of increasing length is used as an external calibrant. The retention times of the separated glycans are then converted to GUs using a calibration curve. This process, represented in the presented figures, helps to address variability in retention times due to the method being run on different instruments and in different laboratories. GU values significantly improve the robustness of data reporting. The utility of GU values have been studied by round-robin analyses. During this particular study, when multiple sites reported released glycan hillock profiles in terms of retention times, very significant deviations were found in the data set. RSDs for glycan components in the profiles were as high as 8.5%. Upon conversion from retention times to GU values, RSDs reduced to less than 0.5%. In addition to improving the accuracy and precision of data reporting, GU values can likewise be used to make glycan assignments less ambiguous. Work is currently underway via collaboration with Professor Pauline Rudd at the National Institute for Bioprocessing Research and Training known as NIBERT, to create a GU database for rapid fluoromethyl label glycans. The detail of information in this maturing database will be useful in combination with MS data to assign linkage information to isobaric glycans. Given the significance of GU-based LC calibration, it was important to complement rapid fluoromethyl label glycans with an appropriate dextran calibration ladder. This was not an easy endeavor. Dextran does not natively contain an amine that can be modified with rapid labeling reagents. Also, reductive amination with any sort of analogs of rapid tagging reagents is disadvantageous. By introducing a different linkage chemistry, reductive amination with analogs produces labeled dextran with physical chemical properties different than rapid fluoromethyl labeled glycans, which would obviously not be appropriate for use then as a calibrant. In a novel approach, we have prepared a rapid fluoromethyl dextran calibration ladder with physical chemical properties matching rapid fluoromethyl label glycans, for instance, fluorescence wavelength maxima, as is evidenced here with the displayed spectra. The rapid fluoromethyl dextran calibration ladder is unique in that it is produced by a process involving two steps of labeling. To prepare the standard, dextran is first reductively aminated with ethanolamine and then subsequently labeled with, rap with rapid fluoromethyl. The obtained dextran derivative contains a urea link that's just like rapid fluoromethyl labeled glycans. Moreover, the ethanol amino side chain on the linkage tunes the hillock retention of the dextran to desirable levels for GU value generation. With this novel dextran ladder, the enhanced sensitivity afforded by rapid fluoromethyl labeling can now be paired with GU values for extremely robust glycan characterization and assignment. Along with these standards, a mobile phase concentrate is being made available to improve the likelihood of generating high-quality MS spectra. It should be pointed out that LCMS of glycans is not trivial. Although rapid fluoromethyl addresses issues with glycan ionization efficiency, the tendency of glycans to form salt adducts upon ionization must still be dealt with. Needless to say, high-purity mobile phases are critical to successful glycan LCMS. The developed LCMS-grade mobile phase concentrate eliminates concerns on mobile phase additive purity and laboratory glassware cleanliness. This concentrate is provided in a 10 milliliter volume that can be simply poured into a one liter bottle of LCMS water to generate the recommended aqueous mobile phase. So in summary of all the data that we have shared today, it can be said that N-glycan characterization can be facilitated by combining rapid floor mass labeling and high sensitivity QTOF mass spectrometry. Importantly, Rapid fluoromethyl enhances ESI of glycans, producing high charge state protonated ions. Because of this, there is now a possibility to even take advantage of a miniaturized quadrupole instrument, the QDA, for mass detection of routine and routine analyses and glycan monitoring. Finally, 
new glycan standards and reagents have been developed to support these new workflows. And taken together, these results seen for rapifluoromethyl labeling of glycans as harnessed in the new Glycoworks rapifluoromethylene glycan kit, call attention to the significant promise that rapifluoromethyl labeling holds for helix-based profiling of N-glycan. For those interested in reading and seeing more on the subject, I would invite you to look over an application note we have compiled on rapifluoromethyl. Also note that a manuscript covering related developments in N-glycan sample prep is in preparation for submission to a peer-reviewed journal. And coming from the launch of our rapifluoromethyl and glycan kit, you can also find three posters online that were presented at WCBP on rapifluoromethyl, its combined use with QDA detection, and work by NIBER on the generation of a new GU database. And lastly, these URLs, waters.com slash glycans and waters.com slash rapifluoromethyl, can be accessed to find additional information and even instructional videos about our approaches to in glycan sample preparation. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and um, return to John for final comments. Matt, thank you so much for clearly demonstrating how a streamlined glycan sample prep workflow can vastly improve glycan analysis. Uh, you described an approach that is sensitive and very, very efficient, so thank you very much. I also want to say thank you to our audience for attending, but please don't leave. We're, we're shortly going to take a look at the results of our two polls, and then we're going to begin our Q&A session. All right, so let's take a look at the results from our polls. Uh, the first question was, what is your primary mode of detection in your laboratories today? Uh, the responses were fluorescence only 24.1%, both fluorescence and aspect 46.3%, and the third was fluorescence only, but would be interested in mass uh, assignment if I could do it easily. Um, Matt, you want to comment on these, either in terms of anything came up during your discussion or just in general? So I would say that we're not necessarily surprised by the response that you're giving us because we had taken a pretty good measure of the pains that customers were feeling in the sample preparation of in glycan. So it looks like there's a split to to simply having MS along with fluorescence. And um, this most certainly is something that we strive to give with our new in glycan sample preparation technologies. Okay. Okay, great. And the second question, what feature of your existing sample prep workflow would be most desirable to improve? Speed, 35.7. Why, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know. Simple to follow protocol, 19.6. Fluorescent sensitivity, 1.8%. Fluorescence and MS sensitivity, 23.2. And the ability to transfer the workflow easily throughout your organization, 19.6. Uh, I want to add something to what you think these all mean. So again, um, it's quite obvious that uh, scientists are looking for MS sensitivity along with what had historically been used, and that is fluorescence detection. But also now we can see that speed and simplicity as well as transferability is very important. And each of these things that um, Waters and uh, my collection and uh, scientists and the technical team, we've been working toward this and uh, we have a good suite of technologies to help with all these different areas. Okay, well, thank you for that. Now, let's look at some of these questions that come in from the audience. The first one, does Rapiflor have equivalent labeling efficiency for most kinds of N-glycans? That is a very good question. We had spent a very significant amount of time studying rapid tagging reactions. I would point out that what we're targeting on the glycan is the same exact residue, no matter the different uh, complexity or chemical characteristic of the individual N-glycans, and that is a, an N-glycan uh, terminated with a glycnac residue and having a beta-glycosylamine. In addition to understanding that, it's a, it would be worthwhile to understand that we use a saturating and tightly controlled modification condition. And we've also taken um, the time to look at what one could call um, unbiased views of a glycan profile, such as through glycopeptide mapping or subunit um, IgG glycan analysis. And what we can assure is that we've seen matching profiles for many different situations. 
Thank you. Uh, another question, are there any buffer constraints that uh, we need to be aware of? Indeed, there are some buffer constraints in that it's important to avoid any nucleophiles going into the sample preparation at relatively high concentrations. And I would uh, characterize that as something that in the reaction mixture will be at above a tenth of a millimolar. So it is recommended to watch out for things such as tris, histidine, or glycine. And this may require a, a dialysis or molecular weight cutoff for a buffer exchange or possibly the use of an ethanol precipitation. Okay, and another question. How much sample is loaded at one milligram per milliliter? Well, no matter the protein concentration, the sample preparation is designed for 15 micrograms of glycoprotein. Okay, brief and to the point. And let's see this question. Is the enhancement in the FL signal due to the label molecule or a higher SPE yield? The way in which we characterize our response factors eliminated the SPE as a factor. In fact, when we were looking at the comparisons to alternative labeling reagents, we analyzed crude reaction mixtures. This eliminates any potential biases for SPE and individual labeling reagents. It's not necessarily the advised or recommended procedure to use for the N-glycan analysis because you'll have some fluorescence background giving you a sloping baseline, but it does ensure that we've accurately measured our fluorescence response factors. And does UNIFI have glycan library corresponding rapifluor labeling for glycan identification? First, I should explain that UNIFI is one of our instrument control and data analysis software suites. It is quite well developed for glycan analysis in this regard. We will in the second half of this year, be incorporating a, an initial called a startup glycan library for rapid fluor mass label glycans. This is something that we've been developing with NIBERT and should help significantly in making glycan assignments. And Matt, are there selectivity differences, biases for glycans with this label versus 2AB? So I've already pointed out that we've strive to eliminate any bias or selectivity in our labeling, in the labeling reactions themselves. But I would also point out that we've seen chromatographically that the selectivity of rapifluoromess in glycan separations is highly similar to 2AB labeled glycans. There is a slight shift in absolute retention, and this has to do with the additional hydrogen bond donors and acceptors in the rapifluoromess label, but overall the selectivity is very well maintained, particularly for IgG and IgG-like glycosylation. And in addition to that, we've seen some very exciting results from a collaboration from industry wherein they have been able to obtain consistent in-glycan profiling information moving from historical 2AB plus HPLC separations to rapifluoromass and UPLC separations. Great, thank you. And is this approach useful for phosphorylated glycans? Again, I can speak to some of the results we have coming in from collaborations. We have heard from a fairly well-known biopharma company that this is indeed working very well for phosphorylated glycan species. And um, I, do, I don't believe that there would be any concern of this not working as we'd expect it to. Well, Matt, thank you for answering those questions and, and for the presentation. But unfortunately, we have run out of time. Please note that this webinar will be archived for six months on our website, www.genengnews.com. If you miss parts of it, you can watch it again, or you can recommend it to your colleagues and friends, which we highly recommend. So, Matt, thank you again for your outstanding presentation, and also thank you to our audience for your attention and for those very thoughtful questions about the topics brought up during the webinar. And thank you to Waters, who made whose support made this webinar possible. Bye-bye for now.